A while back, an eclectic Spanish art collection was offered for auction by Christie's in London. The standout item was a life-sized painting of St. Joseph and the Christ Child by the 17th century painter Bartolome Murillo, estimated to be worth millions of pounds. With a credible naturalism and visionary otherworldliness, Murillo offers not the elderly gentleman of earlier iconography, but a virile, handsome Joseph, resembling the adult Christ. Here he holds the hand of his preschool-aged son to present him to the viewer. The boy is clearly copying his father's stance. And in perfect parallel, the two gaze at us, serious, even sorrowful. Well, some of us have great fathers or stepfathers, some more ordinary ones, and still others, sadly, have had abusive or absent fathers. Joseph was in the first category if the happiness and holiness of his wife and child are any indication. At a time when people worry about toxic masculinity and wonder what a healthy manhood might look like, The Gospels offer the model of Joseph, a just or righteous man, pious and law-abiding, prayerful and obedient, a dreamer yet practical, steadfast and caring, protective of the ones he loves. Though from a noble pedigree, descending from Israel's patriarchs, kings, prophets, and priests. He was a humble woodworker or builder. When first we meet him, Joseph is betrothed to young Mary. Humiliated by finding she is pregnant without him, he would not shame her as well and so resolved to hide her away quietly. It took an angel to clear things up. Instead of some lame excuse, the angel proclaimed the doctrine of the Incarnation. Your wife has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. Great theologians have struggled to unpack this ever since. But the carpenter simply accepted it on faith and did as he was told. He married Mary and took her son as his own. We have only glimpses of Joseph after that. At the Nativity, the presentation, the flight into Egypt, the finding in the temple. He gives the boy his surname, Bar Joseph, and adds his Christian name, suggested by an angel, Jesus, Saviour from our sins. As an observant Jew, he has the boy circumcised, makes sacrifice for him in the temple and takes the family up to Jerusalem each year for the Passover. Jesus, we're told, was obedient to him and under his guidance grew in strength, wisdom and stature. Presumably he shared with Jesus his craft Having witnessed what angels, shepherds, 
magi and priests said about him. Joseph joined Mary in marvelling at it all. From just a few gospel verses then, we build up a picture of Joseph and glimpse something of his private life with Jesus, as in Murillo's painting. We have intimations of the love between stepfather and son and their influence upon each other. Some of the qualities of Jesus the man, his strength and tenderness, justice but mercy, compassion and obedience, were surely learnt at Joseph's knee. In his recent letter, Patris Corde, Pope Francis proclaimed a year of Saint Joseph and gave us his own impressions of the man. Speaking from the long Catholic tradition, he recalls that Christians have venerated Joseph with innumerable prayers, feasts, cities named after him, churches, statues and groups dedicated to him, as well as religious orders like our own Josephite sisters of Mary MacKillop. Joseph is patron of the church, of fathers and of unborn children, of immigrants, workers and a happy death. He is the chaste spouse of Mary, guardian of the Redeemer and beloved father. He is holy, Joseph, St John Henry Newman said, because his office of being spouse and protector of Mary, specially demanded sanctity. He is holy, Joseph, because no other saint but he lived in such and so long intimacy and familiarity with the source of all holiness, Jesus, God incarnate, and Mary, the holiest of creatures. And so Christians have turned to him as the Egyptians who, when hungry, were told by Pharaoh, go to Joseph, do what he says. Ite ad Yosef. Reflecting upon the pandemic, Pope Francis notes that the hidden people may not make the headlines, but often make the difference. Healthcare workers, storekeepers, cleaners, caregivers, transport workers, parents, teachers, pastors and other essential service workers. Each of us can discover in Joseph, he says, in the man who goes unnoticed, a daily discreet and hidden presence, an intercessor and support, a guide in times of trouble. Saints Teresa of Avila, Madeleine Sophie Barrat, Peter Julian Amard and Mary MacKillop all recommended Joseph as a companion when discerning our vocation. St. Bernadette called him the master of prayer, St. Francis de Sales the model of humility, St. Jose Maria Escrivá the teacher of the interior life. St. Thomas Aquinas said that most saints are intercessors for some class of needs. But our holy patron, St. Joseph, has the power to assist us in all cases, in every necessity, in every undertaking. Joseph's hidden role, 
the Holy Father suggests. Following St. John Chrysostom and St. Paul VI was to put himself at the service of the entire plan of salvation. By turning his human vocation to domestic love into a superhuman oblation of himself. As the Lord had done with Israel, so Joseph did with Jesus, he said. He taught him to walk, taught him, took him by the hand. He was for him like a father who raises an infant to his cheeks bending down to him and feeding him. In Joseph, Jesus saw the tender love of God. Pope Francis's beautiful letter is well worth a prayerful read. In our first reading today, God promises he will one day make a new covenant with his people, planted so deep in their hearts that they will be his people and he will be their God. In Joseph, that promise was at last fulfilled. For he is representative of the Old Testament, told in the genealogies and his association with the law and the temple. Yet he is also the first agent of the New Testament, which opens with the Annunciation to Joseph by an angel. Joseph, then, is situated at the very cusp. He is the hinge between the Old Testament and the New. And in him we see at last the fidelity of God and Israel, sealed deep in a heart, in Patris Corday, a father's heart. In the days ahead, our gospel text will come to fruition. Jesus will be glorified as he is lifted up, glorified in his death as much as in his life, as the divine seed, he will die and be sown in the ground, only to shoot anew from the tomb, bringing other shoots with him so that there is a huge harvest of many souls. If you are troubled, like Jesus in our gospel, because of struggles in your life, or in our world, know that like him, you are made for this hour, and that in persevering faithfully, you will be glorified as he was. But like the unborn Lord, know also you have a protector in Joseph. And that means, like Murillo's Joseph, you can be the one to present Jesus to others. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, protector of the Holy Family, pray for us. St. Joseph, guardian of the unborn, Pray for us.